Hello there and welcome, I'm Bob Proctor. Do you know, I think, doesn't matter where you live in the world, I think everyone recognizes that Albert Einstein had a lot of the gray matter working. He was a bright guy. Do you know, I was reading recently where he said, the intuitive mind is a sacred gift. The rational mind is an obedient servant. He said, we've created an environment or a society where we honor the servant and we've forgotten the gift. And he's so right. You see, when we grow up, we are raised through, to live through our rational mind and to let the outside world control us. The outside world being everything outside of ourself. And we get in touch with that world through our sensory factors. We can see, hear, smell, taste, and touch. And that's how we correspond and communicate with the material world. We live in a physical body and we correspond and communicate with the physical world through our senses. But you'll never tap into the non-physical side of yourself, the deep spiritual essence of who you are. You see, your spiritual DNA is perfect. It requires no modification. It requires no improvement. There's perfection within us. But the only way we ever tap into that or tap into that genius vibration is through what Albert Einstein referred to as the intuitive mind. That's where our intellectual factors are resident. We have perception the will, memory, imagination, intuition. Think and reason. Reason is what you think with. And I want to talk about each one of these just for a moment. Our reasoning factor gives us the ability to tap into this non-physical world that's omnipresent. It's everywhere we go. You can be underwater and tap into it. You can be in an airplane or walking down the street. You can be laying in bed, and with your reasoning factor, you can tap into this essence of life, and you can pull thoughts together, and you can bring thoughts that vibrate in harmony together and build an idea in your mind. And you know, ideas change the world. You've got to start to think. Thinking is the highest function that we are capable of, and unfortunately, most people don't. You say, well, everybody thinks. No, the truth is they don't. Mental activity does not constitute thinking. Listen to the conversations. They wouldn't say what they're saying if they were thinking. Or watch a person's behavior. They would never do what they're doing if they're thinking. And how about the imagination? The imagination is that mental faculty that gives us the ability to tap into the no thing and bring into our consciousness a magnificent image that we can use to transform our life. Napoleon Hill said the imagination is the most marvelous, miraculous, inconceivably powerful force that the world's ever known. You and I have one. We can use our imagination to rearrange the furniture in our home, to decide what we're going to wear, how we're going to style our hair. Think. Your imagination can also be used to decide the kind of relationships you want to have, the kind of life you want to live. Your imagination. Think about it. How about perception? Do you know, I was doing a seminar here not long ago, and there was a lady, very dark skin, in the front row. And I asked her, I said, if I asked the audience what color you are, what would they say? She smiled and said, probably black. I said, that's probably right. I said, and what would they say I was? She said, white. Yeah, but I said, the truth is, your suit's black, and you're not the color of your suit. My shirt is white, and I'm not the color of my shirt. So why do we say you're black and I'm white? See, the truth is, we're just different shades of the same thing. We look at you and see black, but you're not black. We don't see with our eyes, we see through our eyes, we see with cells of recognition in our brain. And you know something? We have cells in there that cause us to see things that aren't there. Now, if we see black or white when it's not there, how many obstacles do we see that aren't there? How many roadblocks to stop us to get from where we're going do we see that aren't there? Interesting, isn't it? Your perception is your point of view. Shift your perception. Write a problem on a piece of paper and get on the side of the table and look at it. Then go on the other side and look at it. Keep yourself separate. Say, is the problem in me or is it on the paper? And I guarantee as you move around the table, your perception of that problem will change. And you'll see the solution. How about memory? Do you know there's no such thing as a bad memory? There's only weak memories and strong memories. It's like a body. If I put this arm in a sling and left it there, it'd become very weak and lethargic and I'd eventually lose the use of it. And if I lift weights with this, I develop very powerful muscles. Now, I would say it's fairly obvious I haven't done either of these things, but if I did, you know what would happen. 
Isn't that interesting? How about the will? What is the will? You know, doc, uh, President John Kennedy asked Dr. Warner Von Braun uh, what it would take to get to the moon. And uh, Dr. Warner Von Braun said the will to do it. The will is that mental faculty that gives you the ability to hold one idea on the screen of the mind to the exclusion of all those head distractions. It gives you the ability to concentrate. And concentration increases amplitude of vibration. You know what it does? It makes your thoughts very, very powerful, focused. How about intuition? Intuition is that mental faculty that picks up vibration and translates it in your mind. I'm extremely intuitive, not by accident. I've decided to develop my intuitive faculty. In fact, I teach people how to do this. If I walked up to you, I'd know what you're like, just like that. You'd say, oh, no, you wouldn't. Oh, yes, I would. Why? Because very high intuitive factor. You can read the person's energy, read vibrations. We all have it, and we all use it. Most people use it unconsciously. Think of your mental faculties, and think of what Einstein said. The intuitive mind is a sacred gift. The rational mind is an obedient servant. We've created a society where we honor the servant, and we've forgotten the gift. I want you to bring it back and develop it. You'll be glad you did. We've all got it. You're God's highest form of creation.